to science, few fields are booming faster than the field of genetics. Our Amy Anderson has a closer look at what's being offered here in Kansas City and what's not. There is no question genetic testing has come a very long way, but it does beg the question, just because we can use the most recent technology, does it mean we should? <laughs> Perrin and Hunter Bruner will turn two this summer. The toddlers have turned their proud parents' lives upside down, and they wouldn't have it any other way. Very busy. Um, we don't have anything left unbroken. That's their job. The twins are off and running in life, but getting here. But it turned out it wasn't so easy after all. I mean, what did it take almost four years for these guys to come along? Yeah. The Bruners were having a tough time getting pregnant and wound up at the University of Kansas Health System's Advanced Reproductive Care Center. The clinic routinely screens patients that are trying to conceive, and the Bruners' test results turned out to be a game changer. Both Carmen and Randall were carriers for a recessive gene for cystic fibrosis. They had no idea. This did not run in their family. They have no one that has cystic fibrosis, but we did testing and saw that they were both carriers, so there was a 25% chance that they could have a baby who had cystic fibrosis. They went from talking about the best time of the month to have sex that would end in pregnancy to planning their IV they would undergo pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. The technology can screen for anything from cystic fibrosis to sickle cell anemia or even rare, potentially catastrophic diseases. We do it at the embryonic stage. So we do it when the embryo is five to six days old. So we do it before you even get pregnant. The embryos shown to have mutated genes are not implanted. At KU, there is one goal at the clinics, screening the embryos to assure the healthiest possible baby. What they do not do are what so many call designer babies. The technology is out there to choose not only the baby's sex, but eye color, intelligence, even athletic ability. So more and more companies are trying to test for more and more things. So this is a rapidly expanding field. Um, and then there's a lot of people on our side that are saying, what's safe? What's healthy? What's the point of this? And doctors here say those tests are weaker and can't guarantee a thing at this point. What they can do with high accuracy is screen for diseases. But they are very generally a single mutation that leads to G a disease that we can screen for. You can see that there. We can see that and we can see that easily. But what about things like CRISPR technology, where a mutation is found and the genome is actually edited? Gehring warns while you might be able to do that successfully, we're not yet at a point where we can guarantee that tampering with an embryonic genome won't cause massive issues much later in life. You know, reproductive medicine and infertility practitioners have sort of grouped together and said, hold on, we shouldn't be doing this. Gehring says he's hopeful and confident that down the road, we'll be able to actually repair any genetic mutations and eliminate diseases. But for now, we're not editing people. We're not editing them yeah. yet. That's exactly right. We're identifying what's present or what's absent and, and taking advantage of that information right. to make sure that the patients have a, a healthy pregnancy and live birth. And Perrin and Hunter are two shining examples of that remarkable science. If you're looking to start a family and have any questions about genetic testing, be sure to talk to your doctor. Amy Anderson, KCTV5 News.